Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage. And today we are gonna dive into my process, kind of what I go through when I data log for the mass airflow sensor. So make sure and stick around. start by thanking all the new subscribers down there if you're not already a subscriber make sure and hit the link down in the corner click on that bell that way you get the notifications and new videos and you never miss out on a live event we've got these scheduled live events on Thursday night 8 Eastern it's a blast it's called in tune it's a great thing I mean I just the more people we can get the more fun that it is and then every once in a while we do a kind of impromptu live show on the weekend so that's why it's good to have the notification bell click that way you don't miss out on so thank you to all the new subscribers. Thank you to all the new patrons out there. There's links to the Patreon down in the description of this video if you're interested in checking it out or getting some one-on-one uh, -on -one tune assistance. It's a great way to do that. So, But as I said, today we are logging uh, because if you saw my last videos, I made some changes to the intake tubing. I added the intercooler back in, you know, things like that. So... I'm not sure what these people are doing, but I'm gonna be nice and let somebody pull out in front of me here. Go ahead, go ahead. You too. No, oh, you guys are going straight. Okay. And then uh, because of all that, I needed to go ahead and go through the process of logging my, or tuning my math sensor again. And so the cool thing is, is I've got a camera set up here looking at my wideband. That is the primary thing that I'm gonna be paying attention to whenever I do any of my data logging. But I will also put down below a live shot of the uh, scanner as it logs data. And the only reason I have this thing up really is so I can see uh, that I'm getting good cell hits, which I am. You can see them right now, even as we're logging. And just through the normal course of driving, we're gonna hope to get open to a couple wide open throttle spots where we rip down the range of the mass airflow sensor and populate a lot of those data logs. You'll also notice on, I'm gonna go ahead and pop up the scanner full screen here for a second. You'll notice that on the left, I have very few parameters being logged. And, uh, that is the reason behind that, because the more parameters that you log, the slower that your log time can be. And in, in particular, if uh, some of my parameters I have logged in here, I have bumped the rate up. I'll do a video on that later on, talk to you exactly about what cells are good to bump the polling rate up on and which ones are kind of a waste of time. And so you only have so much data overhead because the bandwidth is set on this bus that we are pulling the data from. If we exceed that bandwidth, that's whenever you start seeing things like uh, parameters dropping out. It's a bigger problem on the older vehicles that weren't the CAN bus based OBD2. And so if you get more than like 30 or 40 parameters on them, some will disappear. And a lot of that has to do with the actual parameter number that is, so it's pulling these things in order and whenever it gets too much data, it starts dropping off the bottom of that list. So that being said, what are the goals today? The goals today are A, watch that wide band. We want to make sure we don't have any significant lean conditions. There's a good chance I might have one because I've lowered the amount of methanol I'm, I'm injecting. Uh, technically, I was running the same jet last time I was on math. My speed density tables really need to be dialed in because they're going to be lean. I'm not injecting as much methanol on my speed density tables. That's a video for a different day. For today's video though, we're just gonna make sure we're sitting right around two, 3% lean right now. Isn't the end of the world. The closed loop system will tighten this up, but we are going to get out. We're kinda in rush hour right now, which sucks, but we're gonna make a loop and it'll be, you know, one of the three or four loops that you would normally make in this kind of process to dial this, is, this in pretty tight. This is more of a verification that our tune is still looking good. So I've already gone in and disabled DFCO, uh, forced it over to math only, disabled cat over temp, all those things that I touch on in the uh, math tuning videos. Uh, I will throw a link up in the corner that leads to the tuning uh, guide, but if anything, just go to my site. Uh, the quickest way to get there is to go to goatropegarage.com. It drops you right on my YouTube homepage. And then underneath there, there's additional playlists that are generation specific if you're looking for third gen, fourth gen, fifth gen, uh, or if you just want to use the generic one, which kind of applies across anything, 
It's just the steps that will work with about any vehicle that uses a mass airflow sensor. That's just under the standard tuning uh, playlist, which you can find down once again in the description below. So that being said, what are we doing? We're going to go out, do some you know, pretty smooth pulls. We don't want abrupt throttle changes. Uh, you know, we want to be able to work the throttle throughout the full range if possible, but without getting real jerky. So we don't want to just mash it directly into wide open throttle, especially on the math, because on the math, we are looking at what is a linear, uh, you know, range of numbers here that we have to hit. So we don't have to fill in that graph like we do on speed density. And so if, as long as we're getting up to wide open throttle and hitting the maximum boost pressure that we're going to see, we're going to max out the amount of air that the math can actually process on our setup. The other thing that we'll be looking for after the fact is whether or not we are maxing the math itself out. And that's if, uh, say, you've got a math that maxes out at 15,000 hertz. For one, you should set that check engine light because it pops at like 14,600, around there, 14,800. If we max out, we should set that check engine light to let us know, hey, we've exceeded what the math can read. But since we don't have to worry so much about load, uh, we can kind of drive around about anywhere. It's just whether or not we can get to that full throttle. So if you're in an area where you, you know, maybe can only hit the speed limit of 55 miles an hour and you can force it down into second or third gear, you can gradually go up to wide open throttle in second gear and get about the equivalent of what the maximum airflow that your mass airflow sensor is going to read. So keep that in mind. Math is really easy. It can be done about everywhere. And, uh, just smooth. Smooth is the most important thing. You don't want abrupt abrupt throttle changes. Uh, even coming off throttle, if you can keep from having to completely just jump from full throttle off to uh, no throttle, you're better off, but it's less of an issue there. You might see some uh, bad data cells towards the top, and then you can go in and filter that out based off of accelerator position if you need to. It's kind of a case by case basis. So as I was saying earlier, the predominant thing that you want to pay attention to is your wideband uh, gauge. You want to make sure you do not have any extremely lean situations. Now if you're hitting 1.1, that's not the end of the world, but if you are getting leaner than 10% lean on Lambda, you need to probably take a step back, add some fueling across your scale, and basically that just means you need to add numbers to your math scale to shift that into the richer side. So that math uh, is reading in frequency, but the frequency converts over basically to how much airflow there is across the sensor. So the more airflow that's across the sensor, the higher the frequency, which in tune requests more fuel. So that is a good way to keep an eye out on things. We're looking real good right now. I've said, I've not seen any shifts on my math curve since the last time. Uh, underneath throttle, we're running right about one. This is without closed loop on. So with closed loop on, this thing just pegs it at one and it cycles between 0.99 and 1.01 almost all the time whenever you're running on the math. So there's a couple spots where we're getting three or 4% lean. I need to pay attention, make sure I'm not in a school zone. I shouldn't be. And uh, This is the, the prime example of why the mass airflow sensor is what I prefer to tune first. As you can see, this is easy. We're not having to focus on hammering these cells out. Uh, it just kind of comes naturally if you're looking at the actual scanner, the log that we're pulling right now, you know, we're getting good cell hits on everything because we've got a linear scale that we're having to work on, as opposed to having to fill that big, big map out on uh, volumetric efficiency and that's why a, a dyno works so good for VE is because you can actually change the load on the dyno to hit specific cells so you can almost set like the RPM to an area that you wanted to ride the RPM and then adjust the cells on that RPM and move up and down that map or, or horizontally on that map specifically 
it works like magic. The map, we don't have that issue, and that's what makes it really easy to get out here and get this thing dialed in first. And then if you need to, say, if you're trying to get your vehicle to your tune, or say you're paying somebody to do a tune, but you've got to get it running to get it there, get the math dialed in and just leave it math only, and you should have no issues. As long as you're not getting crazy on it, and even if you are getting crazy, technically, I can leave this thing running on math only and running the you know, 11, 12 PSI boost that I'm running on, it's never gonna have an issue with it. Now, if you get into cams, bigger cams, where you start getting some weird stuff down low, the mass airflow sensor can start having issues down low, and that's when it's good to jump back over to speed density or to make sure and get your speed density dialed in. That way it can do the filtering and blend the two together to get you the proper airflow. Okay, I'm gonna manually drop this thing down into third and try to get up into the higher ranges here. There, as you saw, we got into power enrichment. And that's the cool thing about having a wide band that I've talked about in the past is by having a wide band, you can see when you're in power enrichment and your air math will work while you're in power enrichment. So you never have to worry about turning power enrichment off or having to depend on long-term fuel trims, stuff like that. You can literally tune with PE on and properly dial in your fuel curve under PE because we're applying that math to the fueling that we are trying to hit when we're under power enrichment. That math is a static variable that whenever we hit that, it will actually convert our commanded uh, EQ ratio and then we're still getting the proper EQ air ratio out of it. So once again, a prime example of why I think it is personally important to uh, use a wide band and uh, you know, if you're searching for a wide band, check down in the description below. I've got a link down to the one I particularly use. The you know, I'm an AEM guy. It is the best money that you will spend when it comes to tuning. So, uh, you know, it should be one of your first modifications. If you're spending any money to make more horsepower, uh, you owe it to yourself to properly tune for that horsepower. Okay guys and gals, that's basically it in a nutshell. There's not a whole lot to it, especially whenever we're doing mass airflow sensor, but this is kind of the data logging process. Now I'm gonna pull over, take my adjustments and apply them as I outlined in my math tuning videos, and then do it again on the way home. So, uh, but we're looking pretty good. You know, I'm seeing a couple spots that are about 7% off by doing the multiply by percentage half, that'll get it down to about 3%. And then after that, I'm just gonna turn it over to the narrow band sensors, let the long-term fuel trims do what they're supposed to do. Uh, if you have any questions about any of this, any part of this process, please just hit up the description down below, or the comments down below, let me know. Once again, I wanna thank you for stopping by the garage. If you haven't subscribed already, hit that. And at the end of the day, you gotta remember, ABT, always be tuning.